Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. I've waited about four years to document this guitar. Okay, that's a little bit of a lie because when these things first came out, I wasn't that excited about them, but it has so totally grown on me over the years. This is one from 2018, and 2018 is a year that is special to me because it's like that first year that my YouTube channel actually took off. And it was with a video that was documenting what is Gibson doing in 2018. You know, back then everybody's like, what is Gibson doing? So that was kind of like a, a play on words, trying to make people think I was being upset with Gibson. But no, it's me just being curious, what is Gibson doing? Because now we can look back on it in hindsight and be like, yeah, Gibson was going absolutely insane with so many cool limited editions like the Moonless Knight Les Paul Custom, the Modern Flying V, which is near and dear to my heart, the Chinese New Year Les Paul. Who doesn't want the Year of the Dog as a Les Paul? <laughs> <laughs> That's another one that seemed weird at the time, but awesome now. The Scorpion Les Pauls with their cool flame maple stripes going on. The modern double cuts that we've now reviewed and demoed. And don't you dare forget the Chambered Blackout series. All those exotic colors, and I documented a custom color variation. So I think it's safe to say this is not one of those that I just listed. So what is that other 2018 year guitar that I've wanted to document that I just happened to get lucky enough to find an all right price on the color I even wanted to document. Oh, wow. It's the Abalone Sparkle Run. All right, so for all intents and purposes here, it's just a regular Les Paul Custom with a fancy finish, and we have inlays that are made out of abalone instead of mother of pearl. But my mom really likes purple, so generally I like purple things as well because I can say, hey mom, look at this cool guitar, right? <laughs> Collecting guitars is all just for the fun, but these things are just so beautiful because it's not like just normal abalone. They really went for some exotic out there looking stuff. I mean, this has a lot of green and blues in it, and they made these things in five different finishes. So if purple's not your style, you can go for one of these. There's the blue sparkle, the green sparkle, gray sparkle, and white sparkle joining the lavender series. Now for me, it's all about the blue, green, and lavender because, you know, it kind of works with the abalone the best. But to have a complete set of these puppies would be awesome. But what I'm most surprised about is actually the original retail price of these guys. They were $5,000, 4999 And to me, that seems like an absolute steal nowadays because if you were to try to custom order made to measure something exactly like this, I guarantee you it would be no cheaper than $8,500 today, even though we're only about four years after. So this one's had a few minor modifications. I think I need to swap in the original pickups, change some caps back to stock. It's got a few like light impressions on the back of the neck. I'm not too worried about it. I'm just happy that we're finally going to get to document this cool color. But let's check out the case real quick. It's just your standard Gibson Custom Shop Lifton style reissue. Nothing too crazy. As far as our COA, it should just be our regular booklet, which does appear to be the case. It's the brown booklet on this one and just our regular COA in there. And of course, warranty information. It was also filled out. That's nice. And hey, that's a cool serial number. It means something to me, but maybe not anybody else. So to learn more about this spectacular beast, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs. Inside the Abalone Sparkle Les Paul Custom. So each of these are rumored to have about 25 of each created of all the colors. So this is supposed to be one of 25. Now, whether they all got made or not, I'm not 100% sure. But this is the stock configuration here. You get the regular 490R in the neck and the 498T bridge pickup. It's what customs generally come with before they become like custom shop reissues or anything. But we do have a long neck tenon in these models. And we've got a two piece maple top with a mahogany body. The pickup routes aren't the cleanest, but it's what they are. And you've got a bunch of buffing compounds still in them yet. Within the circuit, the bridge pickup reads 13.4k ohms, which is a little bit less than normal on those. And then our neck is 7.74k ohms. Middle position just for fun, 4.9. And as far as the bridge and tailpiece go, it's just your regular stuff. A regular Nashville style bridge made by Advanced Plating Incorporated and a full weight gold tailpiece that looks like this on the back. 
As is typical with a Les Paul Custom, you've got the seven ply binding around the top in alternating black, white, black layers. And you can just really appreciate this light lavender sparkle finish here. I guess sparkle might be the wrong word. It's more so just metallic. Normally when I think sparkle, I think it's like in your face attacking. And this is a little bit more mellow than that. But yeah, it still has the cool sparkle flight going on and has a little bit of a color change depending on which angle you're viewing it at. Usually regular custom shop level customs have nine hole weight relief. The pickguard's just your regular one. In stock from the factory, you have four black speed knobs, regular layout here, two volumes, two tones. But moving on from the body, we've got a mahogany neck with a rich light fretboard. The 2018 limited editions are so cool, but the one thing that people don't like are the rich light fretboards generally. But once you get past that, you can have so many cool guitars. I'm betting most of you, just by looking at this, you would have never have guessed. Generally, rich light, it looks like crap from the factory, but then after a couple of years, it does not look half bad. And that's exactly what this is. And of course, you're absolutely stunning abalone inlays. I mean, they really went all out to find really crazy looking ones. Abalone doesn't always have as much color as these ones do. I mean, when they call these the abalone sparkles, they really did the literal best they could do. But you've got your regular 22 medium jumbo frets, 24 and three quarter inch scale length with a 12 inch fretboard radius. The side markers on the neck are also done up in abalone as well. The nut measures 1.69 inches, and it increases to 2.07 by the 12th. First fret neck depth is 0.88, and that increases to 0.99 by the 12th. Just your standard C-shaped neck. Here's the neck profile at the first and 12th fret. The headstock's looking pretty smart on this one as well because it's got the same abalone for the Gibson custom emblem as well as the Gibson logo itself. Now you've got a few light scratches on the headstock of this one, but our truss rod is perfectly functioning and the truss rod cover itself reads Lost Ball Custom. Moving on to the backside, looking inside our control cavity, this is what it would look like stock for the most part. You get your ceramic disc capacitors, four Gibson branded pots, and obviously from the factory, the solder joints would look a little bit better, but hey, I had to restore this one back to stock. In case you're curious what the upgrades were, it had Echo Park 57 PAF humbuckers in there. That looks suspiciously just like Gibson, so I'm not quite sure how they get away with doing that. It had some Gibson historic bumblebee capacitors. The new Schaller strap locks that are all in one piece instead of being a separate screw. And while all those upgrades are pretty nice, it's best to sell guitars in stock format. You do not get a premium for doing any upgrades. So you might as well take them out, sell them yourself, and then sell it like that. But a lot of times, people don't do that because they don't know how to do the work themselves. It would cost them just as much to have the parts replaced back. So if you're savvy with how to do that, you can make yourself a little bit more money. You can swap the parts out yourself and sell them separately, or that's how you get a big parts drawer like I have but this is now back to stock the only thing I didn't change are the locking Grover tuners because a the originals were not included and B there was something else that's an irreversible modification so I thought yeah it's not worth the effort we'll just leave the lockers on there and it's the nut the nuts been replaced that was not disclosed to me it's not that big of a deal it was a really clean job but you can tell that there's no finish over the edges of the nut i also found a small ding on the top right here so unfortunately i, I don't think this is the right one for my collection even though i was kind of like pruning it to be i think this beauty will be a catch and release so you can uh, message me about it or find it on reverb but the back is nice and clean but this finish has a very interesting phenomenon going on where if you look at it in the light you can actually see the mahogany wood grain underneath the finish that's what you're seeing right there it becomes even more apparent on the edge now had i bought this brand new i would have said eh that kind of looks like a defect to me but now that it's a used collectible instrument you just kind of have to appreciate it for the kind of interesting quirky nature of it i mean they could have filled the grain if they really wanted to but it just adds a whole new layer to the lavender sparkle i mean you can really see that on the neck here too well no it's hilarious you see this right here that's a line impression that's under the clear coat. So that happened somewhere between the clear coat and the actual color coat. <laughs> so while it looks like a blemish, I guess technically it's not. Definitely an interesting finish from the custom shop here. But our serial number dates it to 2018. That's what the eight means. And then 126 is the production number out of all the guitars made that particular year. So all things considered, it's a pretty early one.
Now finish checking on this one is kind of interesting. So it can look really extreme at some angles and then you change the angle and then you can't see it at all. So there's like a, a small one right here in your common area. A very, very tiny one right here on the nut. Depending on the angle, you see that little hair-like structure right by the Grover tuner? That's technically a finish check. They're hard to see, but they are there. They play peekaboo on you. And of course the lines by the ding do about the same thing too. There's also another one right here on the neck that plays peekaboo. Finish checks are very common on sparkly Gibson guitars. But due to that metallic nature of the finish, so it looks like a dark streak right there, but then over here it's just like a normal finish check. Just depends how the light hits it. Oh, and apparently there's a big ding on the headstock the seller forgot to tell me about. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I didn't even catch that until after I finished recording the episode and I was getting ready to take some photos on my stand here. That's a big shame. Yep, that's the nail in the coffin for my own very, very, very picky personal collection. All said and done, this one weighs 9 pounds 5 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this lavender sparkle sounds. So how are the tones out of this thing? The neck pickup, it's it just wants to play lead stuff. It sounds great. <laughs> Does great work with the rhythm. The middle position's nice and chimey as well. has a nice bite to it. Now that we've got the cleans out of the way, let's check out some distortion.
Now that we know all about the Abalone Lavender Sparkle Les Paul Custom, what are my final thoughts on this thing? It's pretty much exactly what I thought it was going to be, but maybe even a little bit better. The only thing that really caught me off guard is the fact that you can still see the wood grain underneath the finish on the back. Now, it's not ever apparent if you're from far away, but when you really get close up to view it, it just kind of adds another element to this. I'm not going to say it's good and or bad. It's just, you know, interesting. It's part of what makes this guitar special. So if you see one of these abalone customs out there, it's not necessarily any better than a regular custom. It's just a little bit fancier. So if you think it's worth paying a premium for that, then yeah, go ahead and pick one of these things up. They've kind of become collectible because that's what they were designed to do with so few of these things being produced. But I think it'd be fun to have a complete set of these. So I'm still on the fence about this one. So if you're interested, feel free to message me. We can work out a deal. Maybe I'll find one that's a little bit cleaner shape that hasn't been messed with. But these are starting to become more difficult to find. So I don't know, maybe at the end of the day, I'll just like it for what it is because it's not in bad shape at all. So I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.